Harold was flying quickly towards Kirk Ronan. Fierce winds whipped up the sea below him into violent waves, waves which had capsized a fishing boat. The boat's crew were safely aboard Harold, but one of them was in a pretty bad way. Harold was glad to see an ambulance waiting as he landed. The weather was quickly getting worse, and he soon wouldn't be able to fly. I must say, I'm glad to see you, Harold said. One of my passengers is badly injured, and he needs to get to Knapford Hospital quickly. I'm afraid you'll have to take him, replied one of the paramedics. Has your ambulance broken down? Harold asked. No, but the only road out of town has been cut off. Don't worry, old chap. I'll be coming aboard to look after the patient. Harold glanced at the man who'd spoken. May I ask who you are? Dr. Harry Sullivan, MD. I'm the town GP here. Dr. Sullivan quickly climbed aboard. As Harold took off, he hoped the storm wouldn't get any worse. He was barely able to fly now. A short while after Harold had left Kirk Ronan, Donald and Douglas were double-heading a goods train on the main line, coming down from Barrow. Donald cast a worried glance upwards as thunder rumbled overhead. That sounds like it's getting worse, he commented. Aye, we may have to be held till it's over, Douglas replied, thinking of the last time they'd seen a storm this bad. Suddenly, through the rain and thunder, the twins heard the distinctive whirring of helicopter blades. Surely he would na Donald said, breaking off as Harold buzzed low over the train. What does that whirly bird think he's doing? Douglas exclaimed. I think he's trying to get our attention, Dougie, Donald replied. He's landing up ahead. We'd best see why he wants new. Where are you trying to get our attention, Harold? Donald asked, as the train braked to a halt near where the helicopter had landed. Indeed, old boy. I've got a badly injured passenger aboard who needs to get to Napford Hospital quickly. With the weather like this, I won't be able to fly for much longer. Is it just the one passenger? Donald asked. Yes, just him and his doctor. We left his uninjured crewmates in Kirk Ronan. Say no more, Donald replied. They can ride in the brake van. Quickly now. The helicopter's passengers were quickly put into the brake van, and a relieved Harold watched as the twins set off. The twins quickly accelerated, reaching the maximum safe speed for goods trains. Heavy rain pelted them but they pressed on, chuffing urgently along the line. They'd had a clear run so far, but they needed to make sure it stayed that way. Donald whistled twice as they approached Ellsbridge, and his driver threw a note down to the station master, wrapped around a lump of coal. They soon reached Kildane, and Gordon blasted past with the express. It looks like the express line will be clear, Dougie, Donald called. Sure enough, the twins were switched onto the express line at Maron, and they surged forward. A short while later, Alice and Edward were waiting at Napford Station. I hope we don't have to sit this one out, Edward said, worried. Have you had to do that before? Yes, there was a rather bad one last year. It was a couple of months before you arrived. Before Alice could reply, the wail of a siren cut through the thunder and rain. That sounds like an ambulance, Edward said, looking concerned. It's getting closer, Alice pointed out. A moment later, the fat controller came running out. He had a few quick words with Alice's driver and fireman. Then he came up to Alice. Alice, I will need to hold your train until Donald and Douglas get here. Donald and Douglas? Yes, they're coming in with a severely injured passenger in their brake van. He needs to get to the ambulance as quickly as possible. 
With a final wail of its siren, the ambulance pulled up in the parking lot. As the paramedics hurried to the station platform with a stretcher, a whistle sounded out. That sounds like them, Edward said hopefully. A minute later, the Scottish twins steamed into the station, tired but triumphant. Once they had stopped, the fat controller came up to them. You two did a very good job today, he said. I'm proud of both of you. Thank you, sir, Donald replied. For this, you will both receive new coats of paint, added the fat controller. The twins grinned, delighted. The fat controller turned as Dr. Sullivan walked up. How's your patient, doctor? he asked. He should be all right now. Dr. Sullivan turned to the twins. You got him here just in time. Thank you. We're glad to hear it, Donald said. Aye, agreed Douglas. But if Harold couldn't fly, why did you not send your patient by road? There's only one road out of Kirk Ronan, old boy, and that was washed out. Upon hearing this, the fat controller nodded thoughtfully. As I recall, there have been a few requests to open the Kirk Ronan branch line over the years. It may be something worth investigating. As well as providing extra transport for the residents, the Fat Controller knew that both towns on the line were popular tourist destinations. The Fat Controller didn't waste any time. The next day, he sent a survey team to the yard at Kelsthorpe Road to survey what was left of the Kirkrenan branch line. The line had been shut down during the Great Depression, and the tracks were rusty and overgrown. The surveyors moved slowly down the branch, inspecting what was left of the track and roadbed. They reached the small town of Rolf's Castle, halfway along the branch, around lunchtime. After that, they continued down the line to Kirk Ronan, inspecting the town's station and the docks where Skarlowy had arrived on Sodor so many years before. When they had finished, they had plenty of information to put into their report for the Fat Controller. Three days after that, the Fat Controller arrived at the works. After reading the surveyor's report, he had decided to reopen the Kirk Ronan branch. As he crossed the workshop, the Fat Controller glanced over at where Donald was receiving his new coat of paint. What he saw stopped him in his tracks. Donald's tender had been painted blue, and the workmen were beginning to apply the same colour to Donald himself. Donald chuckled when he spotted the fat controller. Dinner fash yourself, sir. Dougie and I discussed it, and we asked to be painted this colour. May I ask why, Donald? Well, sir, it seems that medical run we made a few days ago made the news. A group of rail enthusiasts came down from Glasgow to see us. The fat controller nodded. Go on. Well, they told us that only one of our brothers had survived, sir. It got Dougie and I thinking. Blue is the colour we wore on the Caledonian Railway, and we thought we should wear it again. I hope you didn't mind. The fat controller smiled. Of course not, if that's what you want. The fat controller strode over to the works office and knocked twice. He was joined a moment later by Mark Stevens, the Northwest Railway's chief mechanical engineer. Mark, I've had the old Kirk Ronan branch line inspected, and we'll be reopening it but I'll need an engine to run it. You're not looking to buy one from the other railway, sir? I think we'd be better off building a steam engine of our own. After all, steam's what brings the tourists here, and this will be very much a tourist line. Stevens nodded. Did you have a particular type of steam engine in mind, sir? A large tank engine would be best. It would probably be safest to adapt an existing design, Stevens said thoughtfully. I'll see what I can come up with, sir. The fat controller smiled. I like the sound of that. With that, the fat controller left. He was already looking forward to meeting the new engine.